We're finding that hip hop is becoming less homophobic. Um, Malcolm Moore has a hit song called Same Love, talking about equal rights for homosexuals. Frank Ocean, openly gay. Uh, even some of the fashion choices, uh, while they may not be overtly geared towards homosexuals, they're leaning in a more feminine way. Kanye West wearing uh, a leather s skirt. He, you know, he says it's a kilt, but to the casual observer, it looks like a skirt. Will hip hop literature start incorporating themes and characters that are homosexual but are hip hop? Well, I, you know, look, you could look at that two ways. And one of the best ways to look at it is that in terms of literature, there's never been a, 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 an, an effort to delay or, or to subjugate it to any type of prejudice. I think everything that comes out is real and that's part of the presentation that these stories are real. So even in a, a book called Street Chic, which I wrote as a revenge book, I labeled a lot of characters and I labeled them gay. I made them operate as gay, but they were also operate binary. Like they'd come out later on and be like, well, you know, I'm not really gay, but I'm gay behind the scenes. There's a book called If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another. If It Ain't One Thing, It's Another by Sharon Doyle. Shout out to Sharon Doyle. She, she talked about, and, and we, we realized that researching it, because when I got the book, I actually researched it, and it's a fact. A lot of the guys who came out at that time, who came back home at that time, had some kind of homosexual experience. In prison. In prison. Now, how do we prove that? Because during that time, a young uh, African-American female who had AIDS, or who were classified HIV positive, almost skyrocketed 18%. Because and their men were on the down low coming course, back from of course, prison. Of course, But as an author, that is very beneficial because that adds to the drama. So yes, of course, hip hop literature is going to bring that out in, an, in a, an adult setting where you'll have even teens who's got to deal with, how do I tell my mom, how do I tell my dad that I'm not who they think I am? I think as society becomes more uh, politically correct and, and stabilized as to how they want to treat people as equal, I think it's going to be the same in literature, you know, because does literature copy life? Does life imitate life art or does copy? art imitate life? Yeah. yeah, exactly. What is the next level for Augustus Publishing? Well, um, we're expanding into producing the first generation of hip-hop graphic novels. We have The Untouchables. We have a series called Short Shot and a series called Badlands. And these are also animated cartoon series. Like The Untouchables was an animated cartoon series. There was 12 episodes that aired on World Star Hip Hop. They got millions of views. You know, they got rap artists to do all the voiceovers. Who so, are the rap artists? Cool. Grandmaster Cat, this is one of the voiceovers. Yeah, they, so they got a lot of original old school cats. They got The Roots involved. Um, Quest Love. Quest Love is involved in the project, as far as the animated series. So you've seen these uh, graphic novels from Augustus Publishing, along with our normal hip hop literature. And then we're in the process of developing Streets of New York and Ghetto Girls into full feature films with Gold Crest Films. We've got hip hop artists who are going to be in the films. And we're going to turn these books into a, next, a new genre of, our, uh, you know, of a film. That's the great way to end this. Hey, guys, thank you so much for taking time and speaking with thank us you. here. Thank you. Uh, you're doing some tremendous work and we all look forward to seeing the next generation of Augustus Publishing. Thank you, Dante. That one, brother.